Let's do some mental juggling. Imagine you have been starving for 15 days. There is no food and rain is your only source of water. You are hungry, restless and gradually losing your sense of life as the end appears to be near. On 16th day though, a man appears and offers you water and food. He's like a devdut for you. However, once you have finished eating, you find he is gone. For a couple of days, you wait for relief, but there is none. Boom! For another next 15 days, you remain hungry and thirsty and on the 16th day, the same man appears. This cycle is reiterated for 3 to 4 months. The person just gives you enough to stay alive and then disappears. Suddenly, one day he comes and tells you that he will free you from this crisis. But there is one condition. You have to be their slave for the rest of your life. You will be well fed but will have to live your life as he wishes. What will you do? If you are talking about the moral high ground of it's better to be king of hell than being a servant of heaven, then you have not faced the actual fear. While a few well end of us might choose to die, most of us will choose to be a servant in exchange for life. Similar existential conditions are imposed on animals and children in circus. I bet you would never have visited them after knowing what I just described earlier. Namaste and welcome to TFI Post, the national social political analysis arm of the TFI Media Group. I am your host Piyush. If you are watching us on Facebook, give our page a like. And if you are watching us on YouTube, like the video and subscribe to the channel. Coming back to the story, in this video, I am here to tell you why the last vestige of circus industry should fall down. Let's begin. Circus, even though it was highly popular till the first half of this millennium, is not a new concept. It is believed to have originated in ancient Rome. Circus is a Latin word which means a rounded or oval hall with seats where entertainers give their performances. In Rome, circus was a building for horse and chariot races. Equestrian shows staged battles, gladiatorial combat and displays of trained animals. After the fall of the Roman Empire, the performers went out of business and to earn bread and butter, they started performing at local fairs in the European towns. A millennium later, Philip Astley, a cavalry officer, decided to resurrect the art. He was a rider who used to ride in a 42 feet diameter ring. He, like other entertainers, used to perform on roads and in empty locations, one of which was London's modern day Waterloo. In 1769, he opened his riding school where he taught riders in the mornings and performed stunts in the afternoons. As his wealth expanded, he decided to hire other equestrians, musicians, a clown, jugglers, tumblers, tightrope walkers and dancing dogs. Before he gave them employment, these people mainly used to perform on roads and earn just about enough to sustain themselves. Now, when they were galvanized under one roof by Philip, their living standards increased. Before his death, Philip had established 19 permanent circuses around whole Europe. The name circus for the place was coined by Charles Dibbon, an English novelist in 1782. Philip had set up the base and now it was time for future generations to build up on it. Andrew Dugro, a man 51 years younger than Philip, was the next big name in circus industry. He was the proprietor of Philip's amphitheatre and the originator of horsemanship acts. Later, various other performers like Hangler and Sanger made their mark in the circus industry. This art was not just limited to Europe. As Europeans colonized the American continent, they exported their circus as well. Englishman John Bill Ricketts is known for exporting it to the Philadelphia in the United States. Even George Washington, the hero of the American freedom movement and their first president watched John's show in Philadelphia. Even though John was the first to bring circus to America, he could not maintain his dominance. The circus of Pippin and Brashard dominated the American circus industry for the first two decades of the 19th century. They built circus theatres in most of the locations they visited, from modern-day Montreal in Canada to Havana in Cuba. 
The industry was growing in prominence and new entrants were hogging the limelight. In 1825, Joshua Purdy Brown became the first circus owner to use a large canvas tent for the circus performance. Later on, positively, a slew of innovations kept disrupting the sector. For most of the 19th century, watching the circus was associated with upper class as circus owners were concerned about the return on investment in geographies which they regarded as third world country. This is why it took nearly 100 years for circus to land in India. In 1879, Royal Italian Circus by Giuseppe Charlini toured India. His shows came with a challenge, which was to repeat his daring stage effects within six months. He had promised to reward the succeeding individual with 1000 rupees and a horse. Vishnupant Charte was the riding master and keeper of stable of Palasaib Patwardhan. The king of Kuruvan princely state of Sangli said that he would do it in three months. When he came to perform his stunts in March 1880, Chiarini did not even come to see it. Chiarete later on bought most of the circus equipment from the Italian and formed a new company called Great Indian Circus. Great Indian Circus gained not just national but international fame as well. People of Sri Lanka, Singapore, Kuala Lumpur, Jakarta and Japan were some of the lucky foreign nationals to witness Chiarete's exploits. Later, his cousin invested in his company and the new company was named as Kalekar Grand Circus. Though Charte started the trend in India, various others also jumped in. Great Bengal Circus, Malabar Grand Circus, Great Royal Circus, Grand Bombay Circus, Hind Lion Circus and Great Ramayan Circus dominated the chart of Indian circus circuits in the 20th century. In fact, their impact on culture was so much that training academies were opened in order to equip the newly recruited performers with the required skill sets. The skill set required for performing in the circus, a reputed art form by the time, started to widen all across the world. Now new musical themes including a specific type of musical performance in the background, gymnastics and other acrobatics were also a key feature of circus shows. Their broadcast in televisions required more and more dangerous stunts in order to garner TRPs. But there was a problem. By the 70s, women had started to gain prominence in positions of power. Their dominance infused a sense of compassion and kindness among the masses. Within no time, animal rights and human rights of the performers started to corner the circus owners. On the other end of the spectrum, people all across the world were getting constantly bored with their boring, non-violent, non-aggressive corporate lives. The animal within them craved aggression, which led to an increase in the caliber of stunts performed by circus artists. In hindsight, people advocating for rights of fair treatment won the battle. They started to see circus owners as evil, which opened the gates for institutional investigations into the background of the circus. Initially, investigations focused on finding traces of animal cruelties in circus. People went as far as risking their lives by secretly recording daily circus trainings to expose the brutality being done to the animals. According to a report, 96% of circus animals spend 11 months a year in cages. Imagine being born to roam but succumbed to slavery in confinement. In cages, these animals were subjected to tough training, sometimes as tough as standing on their hind legs. To find out the full extent of torture of these poor animals, in 2008, Netherlands government conducted a study on them. 71% of animals in circuses were found to have medical problems. Out of these, lions, tigers and elephants were subjected to more brutal torture. Elephants, an animal more designed to walk slowly in jungle tracts, were found to be chained for 17 long hours a day. Lions, the king of the jungle, had to suffer major immunological setbacks due to staying indoors for 98% of the time. Tigers, the jungle rivals of lions, in fact, faced public torture since team found out that they were extremely terrified to jump through fire rings. Despite that, they were still made to jump through that. Though the report was made specifically to serve the Netherlands government, the practice is standard across the world. A year after Netherlands government conducted its study, Kenneth 
Feld, CEO of Ringling Bros and Barnum and Barley Circus, had to accept in U.S. District Court that animals are subjected to brutality. You want to know what Feld said in his concluding remarks. While elaborating the tortuous regime faced by the elephants, Feld remarked that elephants are not harmed by these practices. But facts do not lie. Between 1990 and 2021, 126 big cats are reported to have died in captivity. In America, 5-6% to of elephants in circus captivity are said to have TB. Arthritis and foot infections are leading cause of death for the circus animals, as their paws and hooks are not evolutionarily designed to stand on hard services for hours. One could argue that training would be a cooling off period for them. But even that is not true. Whips, bull hooks, strangulation, metal hooks are some of the objects used to control the instincts of these animals. The extent of brutality is so much that when they get injured, they are given little to no veterinary care. No wonder these animals keep looking for an opportunity to escape the torture. In 1992, an elephant named Janet went out of control while giving a ride to a family. The newly found freedom relatively destabilized it to such an extent that she just thrashed everything coming her way, including the whole circus ground. Two years later, another elephant in Hawaii killed her trainer and severely injured her groomer. To control her, police fired a total of 86 shots. Reportedly, between 1990 and 2021, 23 humans have died due to captivated cats. Between 1987 to 2019, Captive elephants have killed 20 people. Apparently, humans do not die like animals in circus. They have their own tragedies in these places. Human performers in these circuses are not treated much differently from that of animals. Performances in circus require a fit body, fit mind, flexible muscles, and on top of that, a handsome look. All these qualities in one person makes it impossible for the owners to hire them on less salary. So they follow the principle of catching them young. People from relatively poor sections of the populace are taken on board and circus agents convince them that they will increase their living standards. Price? Their children would be handed over to circus authorities. At the circus, these children are trained from a very young age to put on fake smiles, use makeup and many other soft skills which include cracking jokes. Devoid of any options, these children just throw themselves into the Potomac. They train so hard that sometimes they become talented enough to compete in national as well as international games. But by the time they gain their expertise, their mind and soul has been habituated to the slavery of circus owners. Lots of time, circus owners threaten them by using illegal means to coerce them to work. Sexual exploitation is another dark side of circus industry which very few have talked about. For more than 200 years, these brutalities remained in the shadows. It is understandable since people live in a world of conflict and conflict does not allow kindness to prosper. But it's only during conflict that people recognize the value of lives. When they finally get out of it, they or their children take the fight forward, speaking for those who have been left behind. It has happened in circus industry as well. Bolivia started the fire by becoming the first country to ban circus animals in 2009. Within 10 years, 26 more countries also banned the practice. The wave came to India as well and the authorities got more vigil towards implementation of the codes advocating for animal rights. Simultaneously, banning of child labor by government and Supreme Court's emphasis on strict implementation of fundamental rights made circus owners run for their money. World over, circus industry is on the verge of extinction. If there is any effort to resurrect it, they should stop. Circus can't provide rush that modern human craves without harming animals and social animals. It is time to put curtains on them in the interest of owners, animals, performers and the general public.